This is a big one and it can save you a ton of time and we're going to cover it. So hang in there, maybe watch it twice. Just hang in there because it is a good one. It's saving me a ton of time and making some great quality rag stuff. So here we're going to use step one. We're going to use AI to generate good questions from our RAG database before we vectorize it, that is. And then in step two, we're going to use the AI to then ask those questions and rate the responses. And then step three, we're going to use Cursor and Google Sheets to see how well we're doing, give it back to the AI to help us fix the prompt and rejigger things so that we can hopefully get better responses next time. And so we're going to see within 10 minutes of this video how to automate our RAG QA process. All right, let's dig in. So basically, when we build a RAG system, we have to test the quality of the output, testing the prompt, testing all the settings related to the temperature and all the little things you can tweak to make the model just better at returning responses. But after you get the data in and all that, it's hard because you don't know the domain maybe. I had to do a bunch of scientific documents once and I didn't know that domain at all. So for me to sit there and ask the LLM questions to then say, is this good? Is my RAG system working well? Is really hard, slow, hard, tedious. And if I can't do it and then the business owner has to do it, then again, it's just a lot of work. Why are we doing the work? AI can do it. So that's what I want to show. So with AI, we're going to generate good what it thinks are good questions to ask from the original content. And then we're going to use NADN and automation and AI to ask those questions and rate the results. So we can then just keep iterating and with every iteration, make the prompt better, tweak any settings, and then just go around and around. So I'll show how I do that with NADN, with some, of course, with AI, with Google Sheets and Cursor. You can use ChatGPT projects or cloud projects, but I'm going to show you why I'm using Cursor. Okay, so at this point, RAG, everything's in there. It's all RAGified, whatever. It, that doesn't matter. This isn't what this is about. But I want to now take the data in my database. I have, this thing was like 30, 40 pages, how to play pickleball rules. And I want to give that all bef to the LLM the pre-vectorized data and say, hey, give me some questions from this. So I'm going to Say, hey, LLM, here's this data coming in. I want you to generate 10 questions. You can make 100. You can make as many as you want. But I would start small and iterate. And then I get these questions, and I get what it thinks are good answers from the data it was given. In this case, I gave it all the data because it was just if it the, the context window. And so then it will generate the qu questions for me. I split them up. I loop over them, and I put them into that Google Sheet. So the Google Sheet is pretty simple. It has a round one test questions. And even this I will change because <clears throat> what I realize is you can basically benefit from having two tabs, round test questions, round results, for example. And then as I get results, I just make a copy of it and move it over so I can track it. And we'll see how we benefit from tracking it in a moment. So I'm going to say, okay, here's my data from the database. Here's my AI to read all the, make those questions. We're going to iterate over it and send it back to here. So I renamed one of that, which you should not do when you're recording. Here we go. Okay. And we're just going to put that into the database. So let's give that a moment. Okay. And then we go into our spreadsheet and we start to see the questions and answers show up. All right, so this is our source of questions to put it through the other side of this. So what is the other side of this? So I'm going to take my manual trigger and just move it down here. So I'm going to select all that data again from my raw database. And this will just be a way that I just give the, the testing LLM some information. You'll see in a moment. And then I loop over all those questions. So we're going to go get our test questions. And then for each one, we're going to make a unique ID so I don't get any kind of history for a moment because I just want the as if it's a new user. Then I'm going to send it to my existing chatbot, which just is a normal NADN chatbot. And I send it in the format it wants, send message, data, and then the question. And the data is that little UUID we just made. In here, I just tell the LLM, here's our results. So we send this to the chat system we're testing, and we get results. And those results we pass into here, and once again, we're saying you're helping us build this system. 
And you can mess with these prompts all you want. And I got to make sure this isn't from the previous job because maybe you want to tell it what specifically you're doing so that it knows the context is thinking about. But yeah, let's give this a run now. Let's see what happens. We're going to go through and actually I'm going to stop it for a moment. Let me just double check that I did not mess this up. One moment. Okay, and you'll see we're putting it into our round, our answers. I could name it way better. Sorry. All right, let's give this a run. And so this is really neat. We're going to hit our API 10 times because we have 10 questions. But okay, we've got our first answer. Let's see what happens. So here's our questions. Here's our answers. We see the original question. We see the answer. And we see the reason why it thinks. Now, get rid of this context. It didn't work. I was trying something there. Yeah, it, it just says, yeah, I found the right things. And again, this isn't super fast, but who cares? Go walk away, go do something else. Come back in 20 minutes and it will be done, whatever the number is. So at this point, this is doing pretty well. So you could even have it imagine more a novice user or different types of users and have it approach the data that way. So then it would generate 10 questions as a novice user or whoever your customer is. Or take existing questions they've been asking you and see if you can make them, see what they're, see if you can make it better. Took a little while, but I'm not in a rush here. Now, when we go there, we have our questions and then we have our round of results. So what we can do, and this actually looks good. I had another project today that didn't look as good. Average. So we could just, for the heck of it, we can do that. But I'm going to show you something different. So you can see we, we have a decent average. This is actually, I don't know if I'd have to do any more, but I want to show you what would happen. And so we could come here and look like, yeah, it, it likes these things. It found exact answers. It had a few low ones, fours. I had others where there were threes and twos, so it was good. It was helping me. But this one is out of the gate pretty darn good. Now, with that said, what would I do if I want to do another round? This is what I would do. So what I've been doing is this. I download this CSV file. So let's go just put that somewhere, okay? And then I'll duplicate this. So let's go duplicate this. We'll call this round one just so I can track it. And this is just a nice touch for me. And then I would get rid of all of these because we're going to reinsert all these rows into round. Okay. And let's get rid of that so it doesn't confuse it. And this is where cursor comes in. So what I'm doing here is I'm treating cursor like projects in Claude or in ChatGPT. And so I'm just treating it like that. And so I have a little bit more of a, it just, it's more comfortable for me. I can see the files, I can commit them to GitHub, I could track all of this. And so what would happen is, and this is a new project because I'm doing another project, actually two of them with this. And so this is becoming a pattern here. So we're gonna take those results and put them in here. And now I could just say to the LLM, let's go over this, right? So I could say, you know what? Here's my prompt that it made for me. And that's, I put it into the rack system. Don't worry about this. Here is my round. Now, here is something else I want to show. And I don't hope that, yeah, it would help if I spell this right. Rename cursor. Cursor. Is that I'm also establishing some rules here that represent the business goals of this application, the prompting guidelines in the RAG QA process. And all this stuff could be bigger and better because prompts don't have to be long, but they, you don't want them too short either and just useless like, or not specific enough. So you can see this could really grow and get better. But I could now say to the LLM, so I could say, here's the prompt. Here is the, and then I'll give it some of these guidelines. So it's the prompt as the RAG QA process. And I could give it prompting guidelines, and I could even give it the business goals. And that's it. Let's just see what happens. It, it, the numbers are so high, it might not matter. It suggests a revision of the prompt. And I could push this further by making sure my starting rules emphasize, like, don't change it if everything's four, if I'm averaging 4.5. So you can see how now I would go back to my LLM, and I would actually... And I'm trying to figure out how to do this still is I could actually say, you know what, this prompt was good and I tweaked these settings here. Let's see if I could find it here. So I would be tracking this inside of the process. 
So every time I do a round, I could turn the dials of all these things, working with the LM to know what to turn, and then hopefully just keep till I get the results I want. This one's tricky because the results are so good, but I could do something here and they could get better or get worse, and I want to know. And so at that point, I would have a basically a database here of these iterations. So it would know and help me know what to change potentially or what change that caused it to go bad or better. Sorry. Right. So this is just so good, though. We, we have this AI helping us, has the bigger picture of the business, and it has the results. It's building questions for us, as we see here, and then iterating over it. And so eventually, once, I mean, with all these results being so good, I would now probably ask for 50 questions and then run that. And then just keep expanding till I feel like comfortable with the quality of the RAG system. So yeah, that's it. That's how you can, in just a few steps, get this into a flow that will allow you to automate this, allow you not to totally understand the domain. And maybe even later on, like we have a doc system that I've, I, we have many docs that aren't being used or aren't well written. So maybe later on, we could even have a way to show which documents are falling short as we move forward. So it would be a great way to just try to automate all of this, this very important part of RAG. All right, I hope that helps you as much as it's helping me. All right, all of these will be in the forum. Look down below, it's five bucks a month. You'll get this kind of stuff in detail. You'll get me to answer questions about anything. And you get that kind of forum reality of, hey, these questions are here for a long time. You don't have to, it doesn't scroll by. You can get to things, chat about things. So you get a lot out of it. All right, thank you.